Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and look who is back in the game room. Radical Reggie, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? Oh. And happy holidays to you guys. Uh, we have, it's been six months since we... Time has flown. Wow, dude. But still, even so, we got some holiday pickups for you guys. Let's take a look. All right, dude, so I kind of feel like you should go first. I think so too, man, because I've got a lot of bulky stuff here. Yes, and now I haven't seen what he's bringing over here. I have no idea, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. I'm excited to see what you picked up in six months. <laughs> All right, so this one, first one's going to be a surprise for you. Okay. But um, three years ago, we did the Horizon Chase uh, video, yeah, which was yeah. really a lot of fun with everybody. Uh, they sent us their newest game, newest Whoa. version of the game, uh, Senna Senpri. Uh, this has a is pretty much an indie racing add-on they put it to the game. Wow! And, um, they did a physical version of this. I yeah, had no yeah. idea. Really, a lot of fun, and they sent that to you to thank you. Oh for, man, for I know. Video. Yes, last well, not last year, but years ago. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. I know this. I'm so happy for these guys that they've had mm -hmm. success with this title because when this came out, I remember, you know, it was kind of a it was very unusual. It's yeah. like a Genesis style arcade racing game. Yeah, yeah. And hmm. the game is really cool because it's straight to the point. You know, it has yeah. a really good soundtrack by I think Barry Lynch is his name. He did the uh, the Top Gear games. Uh, That's right. From Super That's Nintendo. Right. Yeah. So the theme is catchy, and I got to test. Uh, I got to take the test uh, the Senna Senpri part okay. on PC, and uh, it he was really be, a lot of fun. Do you think he's like a? Fa I apologize. Is he, is he like a famous like? Racer or driver yes. or something. Yeah, like he that? was a famous oh, okay. ra racer in Brazil years okay. ago. So I feel they, like I should know that. But. <laughs> they did they did this to honor him and everything like that. Huh. And pretty much you could play the game. Well, this part of the game in first person mode now. You could, like it's really cool. So, oh, really? Uh, really you feel, it really feels like you're in like you're in the race now yeah. like when you're doing it like that. So oh. this pretty much uh, I believe has all the DLC that's been released previously embedded on the disc. So that's always nice. So wow, definitely cool to have this. So that was that was a really fun video we did three yeah. years ago. Um, we all raced. It was like man, that game is. So much fun, and yeah. it's just like I don't know. It's, it's so many good things about this game. I, I would say it's my favorite arcade racing game next to Outrun. So it's it's it's, it's on the top of the list. So it definitely is. Well, definitely I, check I, this game out, guys. I had no idea. Thank you so much. That's really cool. Well, I didn't plan on this, but I've got to talk about a racing game as well that I think a lot of people <laughs> are playing. Uh, I want to talk about Forza Horizon Five. Mm. Playing this on the Xbox Series X. I have the physical version of it here, but uh, people can play this on Game Pass as well. What do I say about Forza Horizon? Have you played uh, any of these games? Yeah, my brother loves these games. Yeah, um, they're they're so good. Yeah. So Forza Horizon 5 is obviously the fifth one. What's cool about it is it's the largest one that they've made so far. It's basically kind of like a best of Mexico, the way that they've built mm -hmm. the, the level or the world of this. Um, absolutely next-gen, beautiful graphics. There's never a load screen. Uh, really? So this is really, it seems like a seamless pretty much the whole game. Like it's like. Dude, there is one race in here. I believe it's called the Goliath. And it, you unlock it after maybe about four hours or so. Mm -hmm. The race itself starts at one corner and goes 34 miles in the other direction. Jeez, dude. Without a load screen. It's all in real time. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and what's cool about Mexico is that I've never been, but based on this, it's like, you know, it, it there's a big uh, active volcano. You have rainforests. You've got deserts. You've got cities. You've got towns, rural areas, forests. It's really cool. So, so this game also has vehicle damage too, right? Like it. Yes. Yeah, okay. to, to a certain degree. So it's it's not like burnout, but, but definitely... When you go on races like that, like if you hit stuff, it'll scratch the side of your car. Right. Uh, your your glass gets kind of messed up. Um, yeah, it's it's a beautiful game. It's all licensed cars. Part of it is just sort of the collectible aspect of it because mm -hmm. you basically want to unlock and collect all the the favorite cars. One one of the things I love about the series too is that it's cars from every generation going mm -hmm. back to like the 1940s and stuff. Oh, wow, man. Yeah, so you can, get, around. you can get classic muscle cars all the way up to the most current Lamborghinis and stuff. It won best, it won Game of the Year, I think, from IGN, and it won a bunch of uh, game awards right. for it. So it's very deserving. Highly recommended. I'm loving it. So well, It might be time for me to get a, a Series X, man. You should, man. It's a good system. <laughs> Badass, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a great racing game. Okay, so... Next game here. Have you played this game? 
I, yeah. it's so cool. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because when I saw there was a physical version of this, yes, mm -hmm. I have played this on the Switch a lot. I think I actually included it in like a Hidden Gems video Did a you? while back. Yeah, because it's so good. It is. It's very cool. And I had no idea that there was like a PS4 physical, so. Merry Christmas to you. This oh, for you. me? Yeah, I was going to surprise what? you with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, that's cool. Thank you. I didn't know you were going to do that. Wow. Yeah, man. Huh. Uh, that game is so freaking cool, man. Yeah. And it's like, it has a cyberpunk feel to it. The yeah. voice acting, the way it's just like, it's so gritty and it's arcade fun, like run and gun. Uh, the voice acting is fun. Like, like not fun, but it's just, just like, it's, I don't know. It's just something really nostalgic about how it's a throwback to older games. Yes. Whoever made this game, which I, I don't, I'm not really familiar with the company too much, but um, they definitely had a love for old school run and gun games. And yeah, they, yeah. They really put something special together with this one. They're actually <laughs> making an arcade game for it. Oh, you mean like a, a physical stand up yeah, arcade? Yeah, stand up arcade. Like on their website, there's like huh. you have to send them your, your your email address, and then when um, they get more information, I guess they'll get back to you. But yeah, they're making it into an arcade game. Really? So wow. definitely something really cool. Huh. Um, so far, what I've seen, they get this game. It's a it's a physical release on Amazon. They have it. It seems like they have an exclusive version of it. Uh, the PS4 version comes with it like a like a, a, a cover case, hmm. and it comes with buttons inside of it, and I think some kind of a manual inside. I can't really remember because my copy's at home. I'll, but I'll open it up and show it on the camera. Okay, here. cool. So yeah, it's hmm. um, it's it's it's, it's only thirty dollars, and I, I thought it was a cool release. You know, definitely a game that people want to have in their collection, especially if you're like a retro gamer or whatnot. So it's something yeah. you want to add to it, or even if you're a modern gamer, you, you'll probably like this one a lot too. Huh? Wow. That's, oh, thank you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, you. you. that's so cool. <laughs> All right, next up for me uh, is a game called Rocketron. Ah. And this is by our friends over at Josh Prod, I guess is what he calls the company. Um, but it's distributed through Pixel Heart. Uh, Pixel Heart and also um, uh, Video Games New York. Oh, that's right. Depending that's right. on what region well, you want. Right? right, exactly. Video Games New York, they got like a little exclusive deal for the American release for So that... That game, I I played it briefly, man. It you was did. actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's so good, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, isn't it crazy they're still releasing Dreamcast games this and, day? And they like, look fantastic on yeah. the system. It, it's just yet more proof that the Dreamcast was so ahead of its time that even today, games like this look really good on it. And they mm -hmm. play really awesome, too. Yeah. So this is this is basically a run-and-gun platforming game, very similar. It reminded me of Turrican. Yeah. And also, uh, Gun Lord is another game that a lot yes. of people like. Yep. Just And it controls so well. Like, at first I was kind of confused. I didn't exactly know how to get onto the platforms. And I realized, oh, you got like a rocket you gotta move, Yeah, that's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Just a super cool game. I like how the cover is reversible. Yeah, like you, you go like to have a Japanese version of the cover you yeah. want, or the American cover just by switching the manual over or whatnot. So that's, that's cool how they do that. Yeah, and, and if you're in Europe and you prefer the blue style of Dreamcast uh, cases. cases, you can get that version of it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is... I was very happy to get this. This is pretty cool. Right so, on, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's always... I always get nervous what I should pull out next, but I'm just going to grab something. Okay. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. Ah, yes. Another classic. A Hat in Time finally you, got a physical release. You mess messaged me, like, what, a couple <laughs> weeks ago? You're like, dude, get this game! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, well... Okay, so this game is like a like a like it's a three D platform pretty mm -hmm. much. If you play Mario sixty four, yeah. Mario Sunshine, uh, even Lucky Steel stuff like that, you know what you're get, getting into when you play this game. I was waiting for it to get a physical release on the PS four for years. I didn't think it was going to happen, so they mm -hmm. they brought out a Switch version, mm -hmm. and I got that. But the Switch version is obviously downgraded and whatnot. You want the best experience with these type of games, and they came out with this version, and I was so freaking happy. So Hat Time, obviously three D platformer. Has a lot of charm. Uh, really cool events that you do in the game. It's just man, it really pulls you in, man. It makes it makes you fall in love with 3D platformers all over again. Uh, I'll, I'll admit I didn't pick it up yet. <laughs> yes, all right. Yet, but you're gonna get it soon, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, definitely. So. definitely. And they still they're still releasing DLC for it, which is nice. Mm. You know, um, just a really well put together game. And I think this is uh, humble humble games did this game. Mm. Uh, or Gears for Breakfast made the game. Um, I. I think this is this is their only game so far. I'm not hmm. sure, but man, this game is amazing, guys. Pick this one up. Whether you get it, on, I, I would prefer you get it on the PS4. But if you had to get the Switch version, you get that one too. But I feel like this is the best version. It's also on Xbox, but it's digital only. Mm. So just let you guys know. Hmm. But pick this one up. Hat in time. Okay, that's on my list. <laughs> All right, next up is something a little bit different here. So it's called a Plummet Challenge. It's and do you? Do you <laughs> So this is an NES game, and it, it's by the same dude who made Carpet Shark previously. <laughs> the cover of the dude, it looked like he's like, 
He looks like he's jumping to his death. That's, That's exactly like... what you do in this game. So, wow. <laughs> so this, what I love about this dude who makes these games is that he takes one concept and he just makes a game around it. So the idea behind this is that you are a guy who is plunging to your death. Mm -hmm. And on the way down, you want to try to collect as many gems as possible because you'll die every single level. <laughs> the gems are on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what's interesting about this game, it's surprisingly addictive because... Because essentially you are going to die, and so you're you're trying to nudge your dude left or right or down. You're basically there's like a little bit of strategy to this game, wow. right? Uh, later on, bombs come after you, and I think there's like missiles and stuff like that. So you're dodging bombs, trying to get these gems, and what a rush, right? right yeah, yeah. You die. Every it, and what's funny is again you're going to die. So <laughs> I know it's just one of those silly games, but it's cool that I got a physical cartridge uh, release on it. My only complaint is, and it's not really complaints, just a feature I would like is that. There's there's not any obvious way, at least I, I did, when I played it, as to what the maximum score per level is. Mm -hmm. So it, you would want to kind of go back and replay and kind of get a better score, but you're not entirely sure what the best score would be. Right. So I would love it if, if there was some way, and maybe I'm missing it. I, I didn't pick it up when I was uh, playing the game, but you know if, if it would tell you, oh, there's a maximum number of this many gems per you know on each level. Mm -hmm. But I would also see a scenario where you're playing against your buddy, you know, trying to trying to beat his score as you're plunging to your death. <laughs> the cover is just trips me out. It's hilarious, yeah. man. He's like, he's all so happy, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So check it out if you're into uh, homebrew NES games. Yeah, I'm man. Sorry. NES games still being made, man. I it's know, like, man. What a year to live in, man. This yeah. is awesome. Okay, so are you a Castlevania fan? Yes. Okay, so I don't know if you know about this game, but this is Wallachia uh, for the PS4 oh. and the Switch. I got this game a while ago. Th mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a cool game. Yes, man. It is. You could tell the, the, the creators or fans of the Castlevania yeah. series, but the game more plays like a running gun in a way. So you could play it as like kind of like a, a well, you could play it as a shooter kind of because you shoot arrows at your enemies pretty much, but you also have a sword too, so you can have close combat as well, which is really nice. And the game is just, man, the, from the music to the boss battles, it just the way it plays out is so much fun. I was very impressed with this game. Yeah. It even added voice acting in it. Yeah. So the voice acting is kind of like, whoa, what the heck happened? <laughs> like, there's this one peasant lady you meet before you fight the first boss, and I heard her voice. I'm like, oh, my God, this is horrible. <laughs> I, had to, hurt. <laughs> I had to skip it. But, um, man, I was just so happy that this game came out, and especially happy that it came out on PS4, because the PS4 is like my main console when yeah, I want to play games. It's funny you mentioned, yeah, so I, I think I have the Switch version, but I, I got it a while ago. That's cool. Yeah, so yeah. Um, the, the Switch version is available at Video Games New York that I know of. I think they, they got a publishing right to it. And then the, the PS4 version I got from Pixel Heart themselves. Yeah. So I just had to have it on PS4. But it's definitely a game that you guys will want to pick up. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. It's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. If you're yeah. a Castlevania fan, you'll like it. Uh, it's it, it's not like playing, play, it doesn't play like Castlevania, like the Metroidvania ones. It plays like the more the linear ones. Like you go to a level, you finish that level, move on to the next. And that's, that's what I like, you know, yeah. and everything. So hmm. definitely something that you all should check out. All right, next up for me is a newer game I picked up recently and finished, uh, I think last week. That is the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy on the that Xbox That went on sale during Black Friday, I believe. Yeah, I, this one on real, this one on sale real quick. Yeah. What do I think about this game? I was blown away by so much of it. Uh, the, the story is amazing. The characters are excellent. The voice acting is awesome. It's laugh out loud funny. Really? Oh, dude, dude. I have belly laughed while playing this game. It's so funny. And they put wow, they put that much work into it. That's yes. great to know, yes. man. My only caveat is, and it and it's a common complaint with this game, is that the combat okay. is um it it it's an acquired taste. Because essentially what they do is they they, they kind of make Star Lord, your character, a little bit weak mm -hmm. because they want to encourage you to control your, your your party members and so what you so what you're constantly doing so so he has guns and stuff like that and it's in the beginning he's extremely weak he definitely gets some 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 better weapons later on or some uh, elemental attacks but anyways what you what you do in it you really only control him and then you you bring up the the, the bumper and you can control uh, the other characters to uh, do attacks for you mm. and it's not my favorite it definitely feels very grindy at times um, I don't know. People have said that they like it as it goes along. I finished the game and I never really connected with the the combat very much. That's probably why it went on sale so fast because maybe a lot of people. 
and yeah, fell off from that. So they did a fantastic job with everything, but I just never quite gelled with the combat. I'd love to know from you guys down in the comments what you think about that. Regardless of that, I'm so happy that I, I played and beat it because, mm -hmm. man, if you were a fan of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, especially the movies, this is this should have been the second movie. Wow. I think it's better than the second movie by far. So. Wow, they should have. Wow, dude, Marvel's really taken off with the yeah the, the stuff. Man. I mean, I I think you know, again it, in this game there is a there is a core that 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 could be just amazing. Yeah. If they just somehow tweak the combat some bit. <laughs> yeah, that little thing like that. But I'd love to see what they do next with it. Okay, um, next up, I got um, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon uh, for the Switch. This was a limited run thing, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so I got that version. My buddy John, uh, we traded it for a copy of it because I wanted the uh, collector's edition. Okay. Um, I also got it on the, the PS4. This is the second game. Okay. Yeah, it's the second game. and it's Well, second out of the Bloodstained, uh, Curse of the Moon uh, uh -huh. games. Okay. Because there's Ritual of the Night, which is the one, that, the newer one that came out. Okay. Uh, they're made by uh, Indie Crates. Uh, they're the same people who made um, something like... Uh, the Gunvolt games or whatnot, or oh. even the new Blaster Master games that came okay. out. They, they did the art for this game and the graphics and all that stuff. So mm. I think, I believe it's like a prequel story to the 3D one. I mean, well, the one we're thinking about, Ritual of the Night. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of, I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know the mm. whole story, but it's a really cool game. I think I have the PS1, uh, well, PS4 version here somewhere, but yeah. We'll that box is great though, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, just... it's really cool. It's really uh. nostalgic to old school NES games. But, yeah. Um, um, the, the games play pretty much level based, so they're not like Metroidvania games. But if, you, if you're familiar with the old school Castlevania games and you know how they're level based, they kind of play like that. Uh, think of Castlevania three, where you can switch between characters and whatnot, and just really a lot of cool stuff. I mean, it kind of shows you what eight bit graphics would do, do today if, if if they were still like it was still like a main console or whatnot, because they, they really pushed this game. Yeah, it's cool. Man, I love that box. It's excellent. Huh. Well, speaking of limited run, uh, I got in the mail a limited run re release that I forgot I ordered. <laughs> I totally forgot about that one too, man. Yeah, wow. so Dangun Fever On. This is the limited run special edition. Again, it, I ordered this so long ago, I, it showed up and I was like, oh yeah, oh, yeah I, forgot. I, I, ordered that. I ordered that one. <laughs> so, have you played this game before? A uh, long time ago. Yeah, recently. it was originally in the arcades, like in 98 or something like that. So this game is pretty cool. It's a it's a cave shooter, uh, originally made for the arcades. And in order to make it kind of stand out, what they decided to do was make it disco themed. And so it's completely over the top, silly disco themed bullet hell shooter. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and this this version comes with a soundtrack, which is great. It comes mm -hmm. with an art book. Uh, it comes with a steel book case. Yeah, it was pretty cool to get. I love cave shooters. I've mentioned that many times. They're, I, I think they make my favorite shooters. Yeah. I just like the way they feel, and uh, this is a cool game. Yeah, uh, Cave was the reason why I got back into shooters. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you remember, you remember that game Death Smiles that came out oh, a yeah, few yeah. years ago? Yeah. Yeah, I played that guy. I said, wow, this game is fun. Like, what yeah. other shooters are out there? Yeah. And I started kind of getting back into them. So it's kind of, Cave is like the top uh, yeah. shooter company out there, in my opinion, even though they don't really make new shooters anymore. You they? know, uh, for me, the, the game I think that really got me into it was Bug Princess on the iPad. Oh, they wow. released the iPad version, and just using That's my right. finger to control the ship was like... That's all you do. You don't have to shoot anymore. You just control, Yeah, you, like, just, you just hold it down, and you, there's usually like little buttons on the side that you can tap for like bombs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But using my finger in Bug Princess was like... I was so precise. It was so much easier. So that got me into uh, you know their, their shooters big time. Right on, man. Yeah. yeah. It's cool getting that. Okay. Um, next up here, um, I have... Blazing Beaks. You heard of this one? Yes. I'm glad that you mentioned this game. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got this. I, I have it next. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's hilarious. So uh, App Lava had put this game out. And it's, it's, I talked about it on my channel before. And it pretty much plays like a... You remember that game like Enter, to, Enter the Dungeon? Yeah. I was going to say exactly the same thing. Yeah. But yes. this one is so addictive, though. Man. Yeah. I was playing. I was like, wow, dude. This is really cool. And I think this is App Lava's only game. This game is like four players too, so you can play four players at once, which is nice. And um, I was just, I was just, man, that's just 
it's just funny how I never knew about this game, and then like I, test, I tried it, I was like, wow, this game is so. Good. I only sometimes I only want to play a game for like maybe ten minutes or whatever, yeah. not you know to get a feel for it. I ended up playing this for like two hours straight. I'm yeah, like, I was addicted to this as well. Um, it, it's a it's a roguelike game, so for, and from I mean, Enter the Gungeon, most people know that, but yeah, it's it that's the thing about it. It's just it's always one more try, mm -hmm. one more try, and it's a solid twin stick style shooter. I mean, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah. And App Lava, man, wow. I mean, they're, they're starting off well. They are. And, and the other thing to know about this game, too, uh, I was going to mention is that you can often get it super cheap digitally. Like, I've seen people where this game will go on sale for, like, less than a dollar digitally. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw it out there. If you just want to try it out, give it a shot. I know, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I'm not going to show that one. Uh, well, then I'm going to show something else that I hadn't planned. You know, you you mentioned that you, you or I mentioned that he messages me every once in a while, like, dude, you got to get this. Yes. Yes. So, yes. All right. See, I don't always ignore, which is good. <laughs> yeah. So Reggie has always told me, or you told me a couple weeks ago, or mm -hmm. maybe a month ago, when this game came out, that a new ver, a new game in the Dark Pictures anthology. trilogy anthology yep. came out. Yeah, uh, House of Ashes. Yep. But I hadn't played Little Hope. And mm -hmm. so I picked up both. Actually, I, I got both of these yesterday. Yeah. I was at uh, GameStop. And uh, the good news is that these games are, are cheap, even new. So, for mm -hmm. instance, I got Little Hope used for... Like I think, 10 bucks, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like 10, 15 bucks. Brand new House of Ashes is $30. And that's, yeah. that's not on sale. So Yeah, all the, all the anthology games are pretty much, when they first come out, $30. Mm -hmm. Um and the company, if you're not familiar with them, they're the people who made Until Dawn yeah. uh, on the PS4. So they just started like a, under another publisher, Namco, mm -hmm. and they started putting these out. And um, House of Ashes is my favorite one out of the whole out of the, the trilogy. I've heard that so far. Yeah, I've heard that. So, I was, yeah, oh. I was blown away, man. I was like, dude, yes, I like, I love the characters in it. Huh. The situation was insane. Um, the the choices that they give you are are like are, like insane as well. It's really? just like, dude, like it's it's a real it's a real trip. I. I I only, like I said, I only planned on playing the game for an hour when I first got it because I didn't have time it when I when I tried it out. I ended up beating the game the same night, man. I, I just cut everything else off and I just hmm. I beat the game because I was I was that into it. You know, it was so, it was so much fun. I wanted to know how these characters. I wanted to know how they got out of it. And luckily for me, when I beat the game, everybody survived because I made the right choices. I knew what to do, man. Yeah, so that that should be. We should probably tell people that one of the things that you want to do in these games is try to make everyone survive, basically, yes. and because they're better. And yeah, that's very tricky to do. Now, one of the things that the game does I like is that it will give you a little bit of a preview, like or at least in in um, in Little Hope, it's doing that because I was playing it last night. Mm -hmm. That you'll find like a little postcard. Flip that's it over. right, and it'll give you like a premonition of what might happen if yes. you, in the future, which is trip is crazy. So during a situation, so when you get to that situation, you've got to remember on that part. Oh my God, I saw this premonition. What do I do now? Do I cut the rope or do I not do this or whatnot? It's stuff like that. And it's tricky because you saw a premonition, but it didn't necessarily show you the the direct outcome. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of still make the wrong choice sometimes. I don't know. It's it's pretty interesting actually. So these really feel like the the current generation of like uh, full motion videos mm -hmm. that we used what to they, get back in the nineties. Yeah, like what they would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind exactly. of almost like an interactive movie of some sorts. But mm -hmm. but there is definitely some exploration, and you're talking different characters, and your choices matter. The thing that's interesting is that you're often making choices, and you're not entirely sure where that's going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't played House of Ashes as yet. Which one are you gonna play first? Well, I started Little Hope last night. Okay, good, good. And good. I'm I'm probably two thirds through it. So good. Like 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 you said though, you get into it and I couldn't turn it off yeah. because it's so like we're you know and they're not very long games either like four hours or something maybe mm -hmm. something. And you know what's cool about these two? You could play them like couch co op and you can actually play oh, online right. with people as well. Like one person online and they, they you don't know what choices they're gonna make, so it's a really yeah. crazy experience like who you play with. So I, I just think they did, they're doing a really good job with these games. They come out every Halloween. They're bringing out the final of the anthology this uh, next year during Halloween, I'm pretty mm. sure. And then they're going to start another anthology, I, I'm, I'm guessing. But they're a lot of fun. You yeah. guys should definitely pick these up. Yeah. I'm glad I did. All right. Um, next up, this is going to be a little bit different here. I got these action figures here. Hmm. Uh, Street Fighter. Street Fighter, the, at least the old school Street Fighters were my favorite games when it comes to fighting games. And, um, man... I had 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 to get these things, man. These were pretty awesome. This is made by a fan home, 
And um, I got these. Uh, Fan oh, Home yeah. doing really good work. I, the main reason, though, I had I wanted them because they had my favorite character in Bison looking like a boss. So definitely something a little bit cool. Yeah, that's cool. I, yeah, you know, figures are so interesting because I would collect hundreds of them mm -hmm. if I had the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, if you get into that, you, you definitely yeah. you definitely take that room. The, the most action fig figures I have right now are pretty much the Alice, American McGee's Alice. Yeah. Those are the main ones I have. And I keep them in their boxes because I'm, I'm not going to, like, if I took them out and put them up somewhere, I would lose them because, you know, I just have to. The other thing, too, is kind of annoying is that if you take them out, then they get dusty. Yeah. And that kind of, and, it, and sometimes they're really hard to clean, you know, because mm -hmm. they have all these, like, little nooks and crannies and stuff. But Yeah. Huh. Oh, those are pretty cool, dude. Those, that's awesome. Oh, yep. yeah. All right there. Boom. All right. Next up. Um, let's see here. I just want to probably do this right here. So. Uh, speaking of GameStop, a friend of mine who is a GameStop manager at uh, the local GameStop here, his name's Andrew. All right. Known him for many, many years at my last house. And, uh, was Andrew at the other... He was yes. The, he used to be at the other one. Yeah. He, okay. I, mean, yeah. I think I met him before. Super cool dude. Uh, he, this is like six months ago. He gave me this. He's like... Because he, he didn't really know what to do with it. He was moving and he kind of wanted just to have it in the game collection. So... Uh, it is the 35th anniversary of the Super Mario Brothers. This is a bunch, this is a, a pin set. Now, what's cool about this is that they only gave these out to GameStop managers. Oh, wow! Yeah, so that's I thought that I was like, are you sure? <laughs> Dude, I, yeah. I, I love these, man. Um, I know Mario Three is my favorite in the series, so Me I love too. seeing Mario like in the like raccoon suit and yeah. everything like that. You know, it's kind of weird. It always went between Mario 2 and 3. But I feel oh, like Mario... You? Yeah, when it comes okay. to choice, is my favorite. But mm. Part 3, man, just... Man, they amazing job with that one. Huh. Man, this is freaking cool, dude. Yeah, so thank you very much, Andrew. This was a, a very cool, cool gift, so... You're going to love this next item. Okay. It's in a Maybe bag. Maybe you won't. Maybe you won't. I, I have know. no idea what this is. <laughs> oh. You Metroid Dread. The... This is the big one, the big special edition. Yeah, but my buddy Keg hooked me up with that because he because I missed out on it. And um, dude, what's, what's I, all in here? Have you opened this yet? Yeah, yeah, it's been oh, open. Okay. Yeah, you can open it. It, it comes with like a, 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 a steel book, a art book, I believe. What else did it come with? It's a pretty um, big box. No soundtrack. You know, it's all good steel, on that. Is this a steel case? No. What no, is, no. Oh, no. it's a bunch of cards and stuff. Oh, the steel is right here. Here we go. I forgot to put it back. There we go. Boom. Wow. Okay. This, oh, this is the reason why it's so big because this yeah. is a really big book. All the art over the series over the years, which oh, is really? badass, dude. Yeah, huh. I was very impressed with that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say it though, guys. Metroid Dread is, is, is it can be tough and annoying in the beginning because those enemies are annoying. I think they were trying to go with the fusion formula, how you were being stalked by the SAX, I think it was called. Dude, this and game pissed me off. Did it? Pissed <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people off, probably, man. Well, because it's so hard to parry. That it it's, is. it's almost like you're just not even meant to, or mm. I don't know. It's really hard to get that timing down. Yeah, but it is. Were you, were you able to beat this game? I got pretty far. I stopped okay. playing. I was able to parry uh, pretty good, but it, I, I didn't want to because I knew it was it was a hit or miss for me. You yeah, know, you never know. Yeah. Um, they need to huh. fix that, hopefully, in the future. Maybe I, they'll keep it the same. Well, I mean, um, a lot of people have said, you know, get good. And, they always know, say that. Man. I, I know. It's tough, man. And, it's, it's kind of broken. Like, fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I guess it, it would be nice. I mean, it, I, I appreciate it when a game is tough and people kind of just want right. to learn it. But it would be really cool if they just had an option there. Call, you know, call it weenie mode, mm -hmm. where it just gives you a little bit more time to parry. I, I don't know. but I, I think what they're just going with it, they want you to stay away from those things unless you're ready to yeah, fight them. Yeah. And I, I've been good at staying away from them. The only, only way they usually catch up to me by make a slip with a button or whatever, or mess up on a jump and they're too close to me. And, and that is part of the game where you really just need to learn the level. Yeah. Like, like during those chase scenes, you just kind of need to figure out because th that's one of the frustrating things too is that you go into one of those areas mm -hmm. and it's and you, it's stressful. You're being chased and you and you're not you're not really sure where to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, Metroid Dread. Let us know what you think about this one in the comments. Do you agree? Uh, should they fix that parry or maybe just say get good at it? Yeah, I, you know, I, I would love to know how many people have finished that game. Because yeah. the other thing, I, I obviously I haven't finished it. I I got to a certain point where I just could not. I just got pissed. I I, I restarted a part of it like twenty or thirty times. And I was really? like, I got to put this game down for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, like uh, Rob Man, you know, uh, 
Johnny's friend up in Canada. Mm-hmm. He finished it, and you know, even he was saying that by the end of it, his fingers were just like claws because it was so hard to to do. <laughs> the, the <final. laughs> but that's hilarious. More power to you, man. That, that's awesome. All right, next up for me is a game here. It is called uh, Okinawa Rush, the limited edition. This uh, this is from Pixel Heart. Have you played this game yet? Yes. It is so good, right? It is, and it's co-op. Oh, fantastic! Really? Yeah, two players can play it. Oh. Uh, my friends on the Level Eight Five Seven crew, uh, they were playing it uh, on a live stream, and um, they were they were getting pretty far. They were having a good time. It, yeah. it it feels different than any other kind of platformer beat 'em up I played because mm-hmm. just just some of the mechanics of it, like the fact that you can jump so far in this game, is mm-hmm. really cool. It throws a ton of enemies at you. It kind of reminded me of. Uh, do you remember playing Kung Fu Master back on the NES? Where do you remember that game where they would just throw tons of dudes at you mm-hmm. and you have to like beat the tar out of? That, that this reminded me of that a little bit. Wow, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, although to be fair, this is more fun than yeah, Kung Fu Master. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's cool. The, well, the, the well, lo- hold on. Well, when it comes to Kung Fu Master, are you talking about just regular Kung Fu or was it? I'm talking about. The, remember the one in, where. It, it, it's it's like a it's just like you're you're, you're going on a narrow path. Yeah, you. and they just come. Remember, you have to shake them off. Yeah, right? I think that's regular kung fu. Oh, I think I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm let us know in the comments. I, I'm confused. Maybe it's not, okay. It's been so long since I played it. But anyway, so that's it, that's what I was like. Oh wow, they're throwing tons of people at you. Yeah. Tons of dudes at you. Uh, they're. It's really satisfying to beat the tar out of them. It's cool. You can pick up weapons and use those. Okay, no, we're, we're talking about Kung Fu Master because, no, you can't pick up regular weapons in Kung Fu. So, okay, cool. I might be confused. I'm often confused. <laughs> <laughs> but either we're not confused about this game. No, this, this, game, is a lot is, of fun. this game is a lot of fun. It's very cool. Uh, yeah, just super, super cool. It's fun to, to explore the levels in here, find a bunch of hidden stuff. So, yeah, this is a, this is a cool physical release. Right on, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, man. Uh, you're gonna laugh at this next one, but hey. Okay. And everybody, all you guys are probably gonna laugh at this one, but this is a, this is a good item here. You guys gotta check this out. No idea what this is. Lady Terminator L- on DVD. Oh. This movie is fantastic. Wait. Okay. I think you told me about this like a yeah. while ago, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this is a movie. This is a movie, and um, it's. Kind of like a reimagination of Terminator in a way. Like wait, wait. it was meant to be. Okay, so you messaged me and you're like, weren't you going to try to upload parts of this to like your YouTube channel? I did. Channel I, or something I, I, like I that? put it in the Pickups video and it was like, uh, <laughs> I added the parts that there was funny as hell. Dude. So you bought you bought the physical copy of it? Mm. No, it was actually good. My buddy Cad cooked me up with that one. Oh, okay. What? Because I, I, I don't even know if I knew it was on DVD. Well, I did, but I just didn't pick it up, but he surprised me with it. But, it, but it's an actual, re- somebody released this. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And the actress in the movie, uh, she was just a model, and she, you know, wanted to, she wanted to try her hand in movies, and she did this movie, and that was it for her. She never did acting again because <laughs> she was doing all of her own stunts in the movie. Oh, dude, I okay, I I love the description. It's like Kill Bill, but with oodles of sex. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. The tagline to the movie is first she mates, then she terminates. Literally. <laughs> so it's like the movie's insane, but it's like it's so much it's, fun. It's not it's not adult though, it's just unrated. No. Okay. No, so we, it's it's okay. not. It's it's no. okay. <laughs> it's a lot I of killing. Be clear here. Okay, cool. Yeah. But if you if you see Terminator the movie and you, you know Yeah. You'll you'll know you'll kinda know what to expect here. This is this is over the top. It's it's Dude, Great. this is the type of movie. Uh, do you, you have Amazon Prime? Mm-hmm. Do you ever just like get to the very end of the recommendations and it it's is the so worst <laughs> stuff? You're like, but, but dude, like, I've uh, sometimes, uh, especially when Rebecca's gone, I'll be like, I'm just gonna watch this dumb movie and see. Yeah, what the, I yeah, I don't care if it's one star, but this is hilarious, man. Wow, <laughs> man, she. Uh, I, we That's did a cool. relax. Did a review with my buddy Fat Samurai, and he was like, just like, I showed him, he didn't know about this movie, and I told him about it, and he was like, he loved it, and I was, I was kind of nervous because I didn't want to recommend him a bad movie. Sure. Right I never know what people are going to think, but it, it, it's tough whenever you do bad movies because some of them are bad and some of them are so bad they're good, mm-hmm. and I love these kind of movies where they're so bad they're good, yeah. especially when you're watching with somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I mean? the girl that did the movie, the model, she said that the like when she got on set, man, like they were smoking weed. And- <laughs> Of I mean, they were like, they were just like, it was just so like crazy, and it's huh. probably why she stopped acting after that. She thought like all act, like all stuff was like that. But That's either way, at least, okay. the, at least the crew was having a good time. Hell when yeah, they were filming this. We might so. have to watch it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Next up for me, I'm going to show another 
new Dreamcast release here. Oh, yeah, okay. Intrepid Izzy. Wow. So this is a brand new Dreamcast game, mm -hmm. and I guess it's like it was originally a Kickstarter, and it was like four years in the making. Right. You picked up a copy as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show it next, too, so it's kind of That's funny. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so this is a platforming game, and it i, I, I got to be honest, it looked amazing when yeah. I put it in. I was, like, shocked. I thought it was really cool seeing this game. Um, like I said, like seeing this, something like this on Dreamcast is like, dude, like seriously, it'll blow you away. Yeah. They did so much detail into this game and yeah. the animations, the boss fights, and how the game plays out. It's just, it makes you feel all like happy inside of just still doing Dreamcast games like this. And somebody would actually yeah. put the love Can you into imagine making something if this like this. Can you release back then? I mean, again, it's yeah, just. Yeah, people would have went crazy. For yeah, it. it's amazing. So. Yeah, really cool to have this. I'm, I'm glad you got a copy as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and they do. They have different versions of this as well, depending on the the region that you mm -hmm. prefer. They have a collector's edition, but I had missed out on that one. It came like with these action figures. That oh, was really cool. I did hear about that. Yeah, yeah so that's right. Definitely pick this game up, guys. Especially yeah. I know you Dreamcast lovers out there. You definitely it's a must have in your collection. What do we do next? All right, how about this one? Okay, I gotta get this one out of the way. Uh, Back for Blood. Hmm. Sounds so. Familiar. By the time you guys are watching this video, uh, Back for Blood has a Christmas theme in the hub level. They have Christmas trees set up and everything. Wait, is this the developer who made... Um, Left 4 Dead? Left 4 Dead, okay. Yes. Hmm. This is pretty much like what Left 4 Dead 3 would have been if they had the license for it, pretty much. Now, I like Back for Blood, but man, the game is unbalanced, man. Like, we were getting far at one time, and then like, we tried to play over another run, and then like we were getting killed on the first two levels. We were like, dude, it was so unbalanced. And the part I'm talking about in this game is like when you get to the church... You get to like uh, you get to the church. You have to kind of defend the church, and they kept spawning like these boss enemies. It was it was brutal, man. I was mm. like, we we all like look at each other. Hey, man, we're we're gonna play this game later when they patch it, man. Cause this is this is bad. And allegedly they're supposed to or whatnot. But anyways, if you haven't played Left 4 Dead, it's a four player co op game. So that's what this pretty much this game pretty much is. It's a lot of fun when it's balanced. I would say, or maybe I should just get good. I don't know. <laughs> um, it just seemed like we were being overwhelmed, and that's what this game is about. You got to stay together with your team. You know, back each other up. Because when you split up, it kind of like that's when they spawn enemies on you to take everybody out. It's pretty crazy, but it's a lot of fun. But only one of the things I was disappointed at there's there's so much crazy customization in these games nowadays. Sometimes I just want to get into the game and play. But there's like these card perks and all this weird stuff. It's like, man, all this customization. Huh. Like, dude, like, just want to play the game. Matter yeah, of fact, keep it simple. Yeah, matter of fact, like when this game first came out, you have to sign in to play it. You know what I mean? I didn't. Even, I mean, I didn't realize that, even though it says on the cover, nobody looks at that little small print there. But sign um, into what? Just sign in so you can play the game. You have to be signed in. You can't play it offline. Oh. But allegedly okay. now, I think I saw they patched it in where you could play offline. So okay. Very weird that the game doesn't have, like, I don't know what they were, maybe they just want to see what everybody's doing, because they're... Well, they're, I, you know, these companies, if they can do that, they will. They like, will. They, what, we want to watch what you're doing, how you're playing this game. Yeah, especially with a single player game, like, what, or, no, this isn't single player, but yeah, you it, mean, it's it, like... It actually is single player, but you have to be on, you have to be on, signed in to do it. I remember when this game came out, and a lot of people playing, I mean, when this came out, it seemed like everyone I knew was playing it, so... Yeah, and, hmm. you know, for me, it's been so long since they made, like, a like a Left 4 Dead game from this company. I had been playing this game called World War Z, and I got so used to that. That game was freaking awesome. Hmm. But um, this one, I just felt like, uh, I don't know, it felt like it it, it should have came out a little bit earlier. But still, it's a fun game, but like I said, yeah. I just hope they fix some issues with it. Or maybe I should just get good. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. That's what the internet will tell you to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up for me is a PS5 game. I was very excited to see ah. this. It's called Chorus. Have you heard of this? I have not. Yeah, so this, it, I believe it's also on the Xbox, and maybe it's on PC. Uh, it is a space combat game in the style of Wing Commander, but it's but it's using, like, uh, the latest gen, so it looks beautiful. Could you imagine what it, what, how people would have... How crazy people would say Wing Commander? I know. In, in, in many ways, it's a total missed opportunity. <laughs> because Chorus is like, what the hell is this about? I mean, so it's basically about, you know, in the future. Uh, I haven't gotten super far into it yet, but uh, there's this kind of cult leader. And you play this this pilot who has this, I guess it's like telepathic abilities. I, again, I'm not entirely sure yet. But it is a full-blown space combat game. Again, very similar to games like Wing Commander. What's cool about it, though, is that, as far as I can tell, it, it is fairly open universe or open space. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of fly around and you, you can go into like little areas and stuff like that. And uh, it's massive. It's beautiful. Controls really well. 
so far when I played a, and I, I just picked up like literally a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. It's it, really. Fun. Is it available on anything besides new generation? Like maybe the previous gen too. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I saw there was a PS5 game. PS5, PS5s and Xbox Series X are still kind of sold out, man. Yeah. I. That's a good point. I, I don't know. I'm. It, it seems like the kind of game that it could be. I, I, I apologize. Okay. I don't know. But um, it's awesome, though. So I'm really looking forward to it. Right on. Yeah. Love me some Wing Commander. Okay. Um, man. How I many more do you have? One. Oh. No, I don't. Okay. Three. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> Forgot about stuff on the floor. All right, so I got this. this. This is the item I was telling you about. Got lost in the mail, but I, luckily it came to me. Uh, Blaster Master Zero, One, Two, and Three. Uh, wow. Collector's box here. Um, what the hell? Well, this is more of an outer box. I already had two of the games, and I got the third game recently, so I just fit them, fitted them in there. Oh. And uh, this came from Limited Run. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Blaster Master series, they kind of remade it, mm -hmm. um, and it's called Blaster Master Zero now. And it's, it's done by the company Indie Crates, which I talked about on here before. They did the Gunvolt game. They did, um, what else did they do? They, the Mega Man Zero games, the X. Lots of cool stuff they've done. So this box, or this case, where did this come from? Uh, Lemon Run. Lemon oh, Run. Okay. Lemon Run was selling that box for $10. Okay. And they sold out, of course. Not immediately, but, you know, I think it was an open pre-order for about a month for them. Mm. But now, I, I was on Macari, and people were trying to sell that box for, like, damn near 25 to $75. Just for the box. I was like, wow, dude. Like... Crazy turnaround. Yeah. But um. anyways, they are fun games. Have you played the Blast Master games before? Yeah, I played it a long time ago. But if you... Is, is that the one where, where you're, you're in, like... like a little, in that tank and yeah, it, it's yeah. really floaty. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The tank controls threw me off back in the day when I played the original game because it feels really goofy and floaty. Yeah. But it's... I mean, I I got used to it now, so it's, it's really a lot of fun. I love what Indie Crates did with this game, how they kind of recreated it and they kind of expanded upon it. So... um. Yeah, I actually got the first two games because they sell some limited run games at Best Buy. Yeah. I picked the first two up there, but they didn't put the third one there, so I, I ordered it from the website. I don't want to miss out on it. But, um, hmm. man, I'm looking forward to playing them. I remember, I've already got through the first game, had fun with that, and I just got to finish the second and third game. So I didn't know that they had the, these sequels to it. That's that's cool. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Really that's cool, man. Box. That's cool. Yeah, I know, right? And they all fit, fit nice and snug in there, which is perfect. Yeah, they do. All right, next up is a game. This is uh, a robot named Fight. Ah, Premium this, Edition Games. Yes, nice. this is the physical version from Premium Edition. <laughs> and what's cool about this game is it is it's basically a Super Metroid if it was roguelike. Mm. So it's 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 procedurally generated every time you start a run. And what's what's interesting about the game is how well it's made because if you think about it, if you're going to do a Super Metroid style game, that means you have to kind of go backwards and forwards as mm -hmm. you upgrade your weapons or, uh, you know, you, you basically unlock stuff. Right. So, so it's it's generating the entire game because you're going to be going back from you know from room to room. So, but if you do die, it'll completely recreate itself though. So it's pretty impressive stuff. It is. You know, is it as good as, you know, Metroid Dread or, mm -hmm. or something like that? I would say not really, but it's also a different kind of style of game, right, too. Right. Yeah, because again, it is completely randomized. So, like, the first time I, uh, first couple times I, I played it, I was like, ah, you know, it was, I wasn't digging the, the place where it started me. Right. But then on the third one, I was like, oh, suddenly I was right in the game and I played it for like an hour and a half. <laughs> nice, nice, man. I yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, Premium Edition Games, man. They're really putting out some cool titles, man. I like they them. are. They definitely. are, definitely. I have to pick this one up, man. Yeah, it, it's cool. Definitely. Okay. Um, I got a Holy Grail that I've been looking for for years, finally. Okay. And, you know, it might not impress everybody here, but, you know, like, I, I've been wanting this for years, so I finally got it. It took, like, seven years to get it. Hmm. But um, my buddy, Gerald, you know Gerald, Portland Game Rich, Oh, yeah. The Expo. Um, we traded it uh, for... The PS1 version of Captain Commando. Uh, I've been wanting this game for so long, and even this is even before it became a, on the game was available on the compilation Capcom Classics. I think that's where I played this game for the first and time. Yeah, this version is so cool because I think it has like somewhat of a remix soundtrack. But on the PS1, uh, you could play up to three players on it, huh. co-op beat them up, and that was just never saw that on a PS1 game. But there's a code in there where you can play four players on the on the game. But I think the game plays a little bit laggy once you get to four players. I haven't seen it done, but I found that out uh, through some on a fact, pretty much. And mm. I was like, dude, this is so. I mean, I'm still like blown away that I have this game. You know, it's just like it's it's it's, it's, damn, it's damn near almost an arcade perfect version of the game. Mm. 
uh, that they, they remade. And the company that uh, actually uh, did this port is the same people who did that game, uh, Adventures of Little Ralph, which I showed oh, on our yeah. earlier pickups video yeah, from yeah, years ago. ago huh? Yeah, I think that's like that's the only two games they did. But um, yeah, man, I, I just Captain Commando. A lot of people don't notice, but it's like a uh, it's it's set in the world of Final Fight in the far future. So it's like kind of like a distant like yeah, like kind of like a side story, I guess you would say. But yeah. it's in that uh, um. I guess I would say like in that in that storyline, same universe kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So yeah, Captain Commando. Uh, but don't worry, guys. If you want this game, get the Capcom Classic Collection. Yeah. You'll be good to go. Okay. All right. Next up for me, I just want to I guess a little thank you here. Um, so I recently kind of announced that I was going to go for a complete PSP collection. Yes. And a lot of people have reached. I didn't. I didn't know this was happened, but a lot of people have reached out and be like, hey. What are you looking for? Mm. You know, and that's been a real surprise, actually, that it's people have been like, oh, yeah, I've, you know, I, I see these games here. What are you looking for? And so a couple people have sent me games. And to be honest, nothing crazy here. But what's great about it is that I don't have to then try to find these, yeah. <laughs> these titles. And so, um, so I, I want to basically just do a shout out to Scott and also Sean, and who got really excited that I was going to go for a complete PSP collection. So they sent me a bunch of sports titles and things like that. You don't hear a lot of people going for a complete PSP set, man. I know. It's pretty badass, man. Now, what's amazing is that Sean, the the one dude, he does have a complete collection. So he knows... Oh, he knows what you, you, you'll need. He knows it. the pain. So he's like, here, here's a bunch of doubles that I have. Um, right on, yeah. man. Yeah, it's it's been really fun to kind of... Actually, I do want to do a shout out to my Discord. Because on my Discord, there are a bunch of people who talk about going for complete collections like sean is one of them that's where oh okay yeah and he actually has a document on there talking about the different uh spine variations and greatest hits versus not and regions and all that sort of stuff it's like once you go down that route there is so much to learn <laughs> it, it really is man yeah i know but but it, what the other thing i was going to say it's kind of fun is that i don't have hardly any sports games mm -hmm. except for the psp now <laughs> i mean the psp is probably a fun way to play a lot of sports games because they kind of get to the point like you remember that game yeah. called the bigs you ever played that oh one? yeah, yeah. It, it, I, it's a baseball game yeah i actually got that recently well, a few months ago on, on the psp and i was having fun with that one you know so definitely yeah i think you'll have some well, and, playing some of those games and the other thing I didn't know is that people told me that that some of these, because they are the, the PSP version and handheld, they'll have like little mini games on there as well that are completely just yeah. off the, you know, crazy, silly, <laughs> you know, mini games that'll be included. So anyways, thank you very much, guys. That's really cool. Right on, man. Yeah. I continue my quest. Uh, oh, yeah, it's my turn. I have one more for real. <laughs> man, um, let's see here. I picked this up when I was in Vegas. I, I have no idea what that is. It's the fun station, man. <laughs> it's the sequel to the place. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Where so, did you get that in Vegas? Retro City Games, of course. Oh, okay. The I best got... gaming store in the world. I know. He's um, awesome. Dude, so we were, we were there. Well, I was I was there before you, but man, yeah. I, I went to the store and I saw this thing and I had to pick it up, man. Uh, shout out to Antonio, man. Uh, man, we're hooked up on this. I appreciate you, man. Um, when I was in Korea... We saw a lot of this type of stuff. Yeah, the there. kind of like knockoff stuff. And, and I didn't pay any attention to it, of course, because I knew it was like whatever. But yeah. now seeing it, I was like, man, that's so nostalgic. I got to pick this <laughs> up. Um, we're not going to show you any gameplay of the games here because it's probably going to hurt your eyes. But uh, <laughs> we'll show you what the system looks like. And uh, I just thought it was something cool because it tries to look like a PlayStation. Oh, trick totally. People. Like, could you imagine like if you, your parents say, hey, we'll get you a, a PlayStation with Christmas back in the day. Oh, yeah, I know. And they, you know, they get you this and say, hey, it's the same thing. You like, know this, <laughs> I know. You know that happens, right? Oh, my God. So does it actually open or does it... It opens and you put a card in, I think, I believe. Oh, okay. I so think, it, uh, it, it's basically a Famicom clone system, I would imagine. Then, right? Something like that. Probably. Something I, like I definitely, that. It's definitely not a 32-bit system. But, huh. Um, It'd be, yeah, maybe That's it funny. is. Maybe I'll find a game in here that might be, I don't know. <laughs> You're an optimist. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think. I, you know what the thing is, though, is that I was talking to Kelsey, and we were talking about collecting and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and she was mentioning that this is the type of stuff that she likes to collect now, the stuff that you never yeah. see anymore. Exactly. It's kind of weird. And, mm -hmm. You know, some people may not find it valuable or whatever, but it's just fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're right. You're and this is right. the fun station. The so fun it's station, in the name. So. There you go. <laughs> That is hilarious. All right. Uh, do you want to go again? Um. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, let me see here. So, how many more do you have? I just have the one. Uh, let me do. Yeah, do, let me do one more, and I have one more item after that. Okay. All right. Here we go. So um, you guys aren't going anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> make sure you stay here. Um, Arietta of Spirits. I haven't heard of this. This is like a, a Zelda-like game. Huh. You play as this girl. She goes on a vacation with her family, and man, the game so far with the story, bro. It, it kind of it got a little emotional on me on some parts. Oh, really? Like, wow, yeah. Because, you know, when it comes to playing, like, Zelda-like games, I, I always always think, for me, the story is always lacking between characters. You do, like, these little side quests with characters mm -hmm. and you move on. But this game goes into emotion and everything like that. Like, pretty much, like I said, she goes on a, on a vacation with her family, and something happens where she meets a spirit, and the spirit uh, kind of shows her something. I guess I could say it here because it's, like, in the beginning of the game, but her, her grandmother passed away. And her, you get to see your grandmother again, hmm. but she's kind of upset that something she didn't resolve when she was young, when, before she she died or whatnot. So hmm. you 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 do that quest, and the, the the connection between her and her grandmother was so like it was just really like emotional, kind of kind of sad hmm. and everything. But it was good though. But the game, what I'm trying to say, is the game is story driven pretty much. Like think of a Zelda game that's really hardcore story driven. That's what this game's like. I hate to compare it to Zelda, but that's the only way I could really describe it to you guys. You're seeing the footage here. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you're into the top-down Zelda games, like I would say, like uh, Zelda Link to the Past, like that, you'll know what you're getting into with this game, or Minish Cap, or something like that. Really, really good game so far. I'm having a good time with it. Um, I, I'm probably going to beat this game probably within the next couple of days, because I'm just that much into oh, the story, yeah. cool. pretty much. So, Red Art Games put this out, and they had a collector's edition as well. So, if you guys want to pick this up, you definitely check them out on their website. Um it's just something I wouldn't have found out about, you know, if it was just digital only. Yeah, That's sure. I love, love about these companies making physical games. It, these it, games. That is true. Is that that is one thing? Is that yeah, my ears uh, perk up whenever there's a physical version. Like, yeah. Ooh, okay. Definitely. Huh. Okay. Well, my last thing here is something so cool. I love this game as a kid. It's cool to have this oh. version of it. Yeah, so this is, I don't know how tall this thing, I probably should have known, but basically this is like the, the desktop version of 1942, a arcade game I played a ton as a kid. It's, I also have the, the Dragon's Lair one, mm -hmm. love that one. And what's cool about this is that these are put out by New Wave Toys, I believe is the name of the, the website, and they're just designed to be exact duplicates or replications of the arcade machines. And mm -hmm. so this one's pretty cool. It has a light up marquee. It's got a rechargeable battery in there. It's just meant to be exactly what you would have saw back when this game came out. What's cool about this one though, is it does come with two games. So you can play 1942 and 1943. Good, because 43 is, is the better game. Yeah. Me. But yeah, that's, that's freaking awesome, dude. Wow. It looks, it looks so authentic, man. Look it, at that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really nice looking, isn't it? Do they have more of these? Like other different versions of them? Well, yeah. So they are making actually a dedicated 1943 one because that actually is like a, a normal uh, with the actual overhang. Oh, okay. They call it style. Um, they they've made uh, asteroid machines. I think they're they're the company that made like the Street Fighter Two one that a lot of people got. Bombstar. Um, wow. Yeah. And so, anyways, just I love these things. They made uh, like I said the Dragon Slayer one, which is like beautiful. Like you know. <laughs> Wow, dude. Yeah. That's sick, dude. Dragon's Lair one, too? Okay, wow. Yeah. And although, I wish the Dragon's Lair one... I think I've seen that one before. Yeah, actually. I have it in my game room over okay. there. Um, I do wish that the Dragon's Lair one had, like, say, Space Ace in it. The other... Oh, so it would be like, yeah. Yeah, or, multiple in there, you know? Because, I don't know, it would just be kind of a nice little bonus. But, yeah. But it's cool that they did that with this one. So you get multiple games with it. And it also comes with... A secondary controller, so you can actually do two player. Let me look it, at the back of the school. Can you actually maybe hook this yes. to the tele television? Yeah, so it outputs HDMI if you want. Perfect. Yeah, and it's fully functional. I mean, I, you guys are seeing the footage here in the video. The screen is fully functional, the controls, the buttons, all that sort of stuff. Right on, man. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, um, my last item here. Something that just came in the mail. Okay. Just came in the mail. Is this what you were waiting for? This is what I'm waiting for. We planned on doing this video a while ago, or like a couple days ago. You're like, ago, yeah. you're like man, I, the mail is still, yeah. <laughs> I had to wait for it to get here. I want to show it off. Man. Okay. Uh, Pixel Art finally released this. Uh, um, I'm not Pixel Art. I'm sorry. Pix and Love. I always get them. What's they, it called? They, oh, Pix Pix and Love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, they The names, I get the names like put together something. But anyways, here it is. <laughs> the King of Fighters. 2002 unlimited match i am so happy to have this game wow look um, at that case it comes That's... in this authentic yeah. Neo geo box 
I think you call shock boxes. Somebody told me they're not called shock boxes. I just I forgot what exactly you call these, but I was so happy to get this, and this thing is freaking awesome. So, um, so what version is it? Is it a PS4? Is it a PS4 version? And uh, oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you, it's, you can take you can take that off. It's not. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even open it yet. That's I know. Wait, but, are, you, are you sure? Yeah, open that sucker, man. Break the seal. I want to see what was in here. <laughs> but uh, King of the Fighters uh, 2002 Unlimited Match is probably the best. Oh, King of Fighters game in the series. I did it without breaking it. And um, at least to me it is. And just to have this like done just really blew me away. It um, smells new. <laughs> I know, right? Dude, I felt I got this version because this is the one that looked the most like a, a regular Neo Geo game. Yeah, much. sure. You know, so I picked this one up. Comes with a soundtrack, an art book, and just like to have a physical of this game, it's just like so freaking cool. I love it. And they throw some art pieces in there. Yeah. You know, some the cars and everything like that. Wow. This it's freaking cool, and I'm so happy to get this on Picks and Love. They did a really good job on this version of the game, and huh. yeah, yeah this, this, cool. is, this is my game. The King of Fighters. I know a lot of people get mad at me because I say King of the Fighters, but this is the way it is. King of Fighters, The King of Fighters, whatever you want to call it, KOF. Man, that case is legit, isn't it? Wow, that's cool. There you go. Not your, your... And, yeah, and that and that is uh, my final item. That, I guess that's, that's wow. a wrap, man. All right, well... Yeah, we we, uh, we had some good stuff here. <laughs> yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, especially for the holidays. Merry Christmas to all of you out there, and we appreciate you guys, you know, enjoying these videos. It means a lot to us, you know. Yes. I know it takes a little while in between, like you know, like a few months or nothing. But we gotta we gotta get some stuff for you guys. We're you not know? gonna make you wait that long though. So <laughs> the next pickup video will happen probably in about a month or so. Yeah, we'll give you guys a month. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care.